bonsoir à tous, bonsoir à toutes. Bienvenue au nouveau musée national de Monaco, à la Villa Saubert. Je vous invite euh, à mettre votre casque sur les oreilles pour nous entendre euh, discuter. Mauro Restif, Célia Bernasconi, pour euh, cette introduction euh, à la projection et évidemment euh, à l'exposition que j'espère que vous avez découvert euh, durant cette euh, nocturne puisque l'exposition vient de fermer ses portes, mais vous pourrez la découvrir pour celles et ceux qui n'ont pas eu l'occasion de le faire euh, jusqu'au 15 octobre. And we will uh, lead this uh, talk in English with uh, Maro Restif. We are very happy to uh, welcome you till tomorrow for this uh, residency you had with us, uh, hanging the exhibition and uh, finish to produce uh, your photographs and uh, a conversation with Zelia Bernasconi, curator, chief curator at uh, Nouveau Musée National de Monaco. I will make a short introduction and present uh, you both, and then we will uh, have a short, short discussion uh, about the exhibition and the screening uh, following. Maro Restif, you were born in 1970 and you live and work in Sao Paulo. Since the late 80s, you have focused on analog photography, building up an archive of mainly black and white images. Your practice is characterized by documentary language and multiple references to artistry. The passage of time is an essential, essential aspect of your work. Your work is in many important public and private collections, such as uh, Instituto, Instituto Morera Sales in Rio de Janeiro, The MoMA's, the New York One and uh, San Francisco, the Thyssen Bornemisia Art Contemporary in Vienna, and uh, Tate Modern London and such many others in uh, South America particularly. Celia Bernasconi, you are Chief Curator at Nouveau Musée National de Monaco, and from 2005 to 2012 you were Curator at the Musée Jean Cocteau in Monton, where you manage the scientific and cultural program and the collections catalogue. Since uh, 2013, uh, um, 13, you have created exhibitions such as Portrait d'Intérieur, Casper Akoy, Welcome to the Technival, or Christian Berard, Eccentric Bébé, and many others here at Nouveau Musée National de Monaco. We are here tonight to hear you both talking about this exhibition titled Santo Sospire. In 2018, you were invited, Mauro, at Villa Santo Sospire for a residency of one week just before it was closed for restoration. Uh, the villa has uh, now been integrated, but not open to the public. Sorry for that. Um, it has been preserved intact since Cocteau's death. You produce a series of uh, photographs that are an extension of your personal research into architecture, memory, and intimacy. Maybe you could tell us about the first object of uh, this series, the book uh, of this uh, exhibition in which the editor invited you, Celia, to write a text about Jean Cocteau and uh, Villa Santo Sospire. Um, good evening. Uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you, uh, Benjamin, for, for uh, tonight and Celia for, for being here for this uh, amazing project and the museum, Bjorn, everybody, Emmanuel, everybody who was here, who's been helping uh, to put together this very um, special project. Um, yeah, I think, well, we will start like right in because of time and everything, but uh, yeah, first there was this invitation to come to the house uh, to photograph it before the renovation. And basically, this was the the main purpose, like to have uh, something registered, captured, uh, documented before the house was renovated. So this was the, f the initial point. And then, I mean, I did a body of work. I stayed at the house for one week, uh, living at the house. And then we, after having the body of the images, uh, sort of combined and compiled, uh, there was an opportunity to make a book out of it. So this was the very early stage in the in the process. And then that's how we came to Celia to write a text for, for that publication. And then that developed it 
into this project that we have here at Villa Sober right now. This is how you have been introduced to Mauro's work, right? Yeah, exactly. The the, um, the project was initiated um, by the people around the Villa Santo Sospia, uh, especially Olga Vasilina, who uh, I would like to uh, to mention since she was uh, very important in the genesis of this uh, project. Um, and so Mauro was invited in 2018. Uh, I was invited to write the text for that book and this is how I discovered your work actually and this uh, specific body of work around uh, Santos Sospia which uh, really amazed me, uh, blew my mind away and um, immediately um, gave me this idea of showing the work um, in a space, in an exhibition uh, and that is how we got into uh, contact and started talking about a show here in Monaco. Um, we have a history at the Musée National de Monaco, which uh, probably many of you already know, of um, showing uh, works, uh, historical works, uh, with contemporary artists, with the help of contemporary artists and their gaze uh, on, uh, on history and on heritage. Uh, and this is something uh, we wanted to renew here with uh, Mauro and the proposition I made to him was to show his work, his uh, photographic work, in a dialogue with the uh, works by Jean Cocteau. Uh, so we started uh, uh, searching for and looking at Cocteau's drawings, paintings, works on textiles, tapestry, but also films. Uh, since, as you know, Cocteau was this very prolific uh, poet. Um, and yeah, that is how we started building the show. Um. Yeah. <laughs> and um, in this frame, so you had the time here to, to come for a uh, two weeks period to proceed with the realization of the photographs as well. So that they all uh, produced in Brazil, right? Yeah, um, I mean, uh, the the whole process is a very large one in terms of editing the material, like choosing uh, the scale of the photographs and then how they would be uh, combined with Cocteau's work and then set up into the space. So it's a, it's a very huge process that we work together for the last two and a half years, I believe. Um, and then, yeah, since this I work with analog photography, it's very difficult to, like there's no such a thing as send files and print. No, you have to go to the lab, make the prints and oversee the production. And then, of course, oversee everything, all uh, involving aspects of, you know, mounting, framing, the, the printing, uh, quality and then ship the works here. So this was like a, a long process and I've been in Monaco uh, for the last 20, almost 25 days and it's been yeah, quite an experience to, to be here and to put this uh, show together uh, with time. Like there was also the fact that I spent a good amount of time at the house so everything is very related to not this very fast pace mode that we always live in. I think the analog uh, aspect of the work uh, takes us a little slow into uh, making things in a different pace. And um, that I think it refers back to memory, it refers back to history, it refers back to, um, to the, you know, the root of photography and that's what I'm very interested in, yeah. yeah. The, uh, at Villa Santos Ospir in 2018, you were not familiar with uh, Cocteau's work, right? Yeah, I was, I mean, I was a bit fa familiar with it, but not as much as I had I had become after uh, being there. And, and there's also the aspect of being in touch with uh, a house as, a, as an artwork as an art piece by itself, so that was a very unique experience as well. You discovered uh, the work, uh, Celia, through the, the book, 
uh, you so this uh, relation this uh, um, um, as a misunderstanding in a way of uh, how you both uh, work uh, as an artist and you put the relation and you can find the formal uh, appropriation and uh, relation to Mauro and Cocteau's work and you decided to build and to make these uh, works together. Could you explain us about how you proceed? Um, the dialogue was very much uh, fun to build, I must say, with Mauro. Um, in the first place, I, I thought sometimes that you had the intention of quoting some uh, drawings uh, by Cocteau because when I, when I saw some of the prints, the compositions, uh, the, the themes that were um, underlying uh, the, the, the photographs, I immediately thought of some very specific uh, drawings or prints by Cocteau. Um, and then we discussed and I found out that, uh, no, you, you were not uh, really quoting the compositions of Cocteau, but it was a sort of intuition that you had had in the space. Uh, that was actually breathtaking because it was so uh, similar to the way Cocteau drew on the one hand but also filmed the spaces uh, in his films, in different films. I'm thinking, for instance, of those uh, thresholds, uh, uh, the, the repetition of doors, windows, mirrors in his work, especially in cinema, uh, which are uh, these uh, passage through time, through between life and death, uh, that is underlying a lot of his work and that um, is very prominent also in, in your uh, photographs of the, of the house. Yeah. Um yeah, I didn't, I mean, all uh, similarities in terms of uh, resonances between uh, the drawings and the photographs are casual, uh, it happened at the site. But one thing that I think uh, that, can, that we can talk about is also the fact that Cocteau's drawings, they, you know, since they were... The, the, the lines themselves, they were like mingled with the walls and they, they were part of the walls and the, he left, you know, it was almost like writing instead of drawing because it's just these lines that they just flow into the space and then leave their, their marks as we can see in the film. And so there is the 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 quality of the of the lines, and then the, the the minimal aspect of that, and that's like, and then that is uh, photographed and then put into the exhibition space of the museum. So I think those, uh, and then when it gets to the grainy aspect of the photographs, it it, it merges, it fuses into another dialogue, into another uh, extension, and and uh, into, an, into something else that derivate derivative that is derivative from Cocteau's work, but turned into something else, and. Um, and yeah, and I think just to mention one thing about the the film, since I mentioned the film in terms of the the how he we see the lines uh, being drawn, but you also have the cock the exhibition, the Santos Aspiers. Yeah, uh, the the, uh, the film yeah. here, and then, but you also have Cocteau narrating the film himself. himself. And I thought that was a very important link to what we're going to see tonight, uh, which is uh, Karim Ainu's uh, film, The Marinheiro das Montanhas, Marinheiro of the Mountains. And, and that's how I, you know, I got a carte blanche from these guys to, to choose uh, a film for tonight's event. And I chose this uh, film by Karim, who for me is the uh, my favorite uh, contemporary Brazilian film director. So, and it takes place here also in the Mediterranean. So I thought it was very appropriate for for tonight. But we, yeah, we can talk about that a bit. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. We invited you to to uh, as a for the carte blanche to to uh, select a, a, a film. So we organize screenings uh, during the summer times uh, every year related to uh, the exhibitions. 
And as you said, you mentioned Karim uh, Enus. It was uh, discovered for us both and uh, here in the team of the museum. Uh, but Karim is very familiar to the Côte d'Azur since he has been uh, in Cannes Festival for many times. Um, he is a Brazilian director, a screenwriter and visual artist. Uh, his uh, feature film, The Invisible Life of Eurydice Kusmao, won a certain regard prize in 2019. Um, can festival and Marina of the Mountains was in the selection, uh, the official selection in competition in 2021. Um, and his latest film, Le Jeu de la Reine, uh, as well was in the, the, the past uh, edition of the, the last Festival de Cannes. So he's very used to, uh, to, be he to be here around and we tried to, to invite him as well, but it was quite difficult since he's in Brasilia right now. So uh, he says hi. Um, and uh, yes, when we both discovered this uh, this movie, of course, and Celia, probably you should uh, you could uh, tell us how it uh, came to us came to us as an uh, something obvious to to screen it tonight and related to Maros and uh, uh, Cocteau's uh, practice. Yeah, I think at the same time very obvious and very subtle relations um, with, uh, with uh, the exhibition we were building at that time with Mauro because uh, the proposition you did was before installing. Uh, but um, yeah, watching the film, uh, I think we understood uh, um, many links with Cocteau's poetry. Uh, for one, I could say, of course, uh, Cocteau is... Um, is also a filmmaker uh, and his last uh, movie his last long metrage was short uh, was shot uh, partly in Villa Santos Ospir the title of it was Le Testament d'Orphée so Orpheus Testament um, as many of you probably know um, Orpheus was the alter ego of, uh, of Cocteau that he found so this uh, figure of uh, antiquity who tried to to um, to get his lover back from from death, from the the beyond, um, and this film, Le Testament d'Orphée, is really Cocteau's last. Um, Cocteau will die a few years after, and it's all about um, Cocteau trying to yeah find himself. Uh, and there's some beautiful images of him crossing himself at, at some point in Villefranche. Uh, but anyway, what, what really interested me that was that uh, uh, Marin des Montagnes, uh, Karim's film, is uh, also, uh, I would say, very much dedicated to this uh, dialogue with the beyond, because the, the film director is uh, addressing the whole time in a voice-off, he's addressing his uh, late mother. Uh, in the name of Irasema, uh, which is the name of a fictional character very much linked to the history of the people of Brazil, uh, to uh, this people of diversity, of uh, mixité. Um, and the film is about, it's a, a road trip uh, of Karim Ainous, um on his way to his uh, Algerian origins in Kabylie. Um, so yeah, there were... Uh, very much um, similar uh, directions uh, between those two films, even though I'm not sure if Karim uh, would uh, <laughs> would say he's uh, in the in the filiation of Cocteau. Uh, but Mauro, I think you are the best place to to talk about the film and why you proposed. Um, well, there's a lot of uh, things that uh, with, that comes to mind. But, um, you know, I think there is this, uh, especially, you know, this search uh, for memory for like, the, he was, uh, as you will see, like this search for his father, whom his father homeland that he never had the chance to, to go to see. So it brings us back to, um, to this aspect of, of, of uh, of memory, of history, of photography. There's a lot. Of, uh, the film is beautifully shot. A lot of them are uh, of the footage is taken by Karim himself, 
and it's a lot of photos, a lot of um, um, you know aspects that I think resonates with uh, the show itself, with Cocteau's work, but also with the, the um, this uh, very direct uh, relationship to to the subject. And I think um, even though we can say like like some sort of spirit for me, it's uh, an outside world into my. Uh, realm. It is not, I don't belong to Santos Sospir, but the fact that I spent some time there and that uh, I needed to to capture something that I knew was going to be gone, it made me feel part of it. It made me like uh, to engage in a in a in a state of mind that I needed to to pay attention to be there, like in a very uh, direct way. And I think. This uh, what what Karim is narrating his uh, in his film. Uh, it's very you know. There's also a very uh, connected link. You know, it's his father history that he's addressing to his mother, and then it's like this whole uh, turn back into into history, into his background, and it's. Uh, and I think it's something that uh, the fact that you know San Spears is a house, it's a home that uh, that has a, a, a f uh, has life, you know. And it, as it was, especially in 2018, when I visited it, it was very charged uh, with with history, with memory, and uh, and I think this is one of the strongest connection to the film. And um, yeah, I think um, yeah. <laughs> Um, this question of the archive, because uh, in Karim's film, as, as you will see, and we're trying not to spoil everything, <laughs> but just formally, um, the film is, is a, an amazing mix of the images shot in Algeria when he arrives, and um, uh, footage material, so uh, images shot in 16 millimeters uh, in Fortaleza, I believe, where he used to live uh, as, a, as a young man with his mother um, and also uh, historical um, archival footage uh, of the independence war in Algeria, so from his father's side. Uh, and yeah, th this mix is also beautiful with, the, with this uh, link to, to personal history, personal archive and, uh, and let's say the big history. Um, and I to discover this uh, this film all together and thank you very much Mao and uh, farewell since I know you're leaving us by tomorrow and uh, we are I, I, I think that you will back soon uh, around I hope so <laughs> you're welcome uh, have a nice screening you have maybe a five minutes to get a last drink before the screening and uh, enjoy the screen the time for us to change the setup. So. Okay. Or questions, if anyone has. <laughs> or if, you, if there is any question. If there are any questions. Would you like something tomorrow before he, he left? He leave us? Have a nice screening. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Celia.